Hi everyone! Welcome to FB Kids. My name is Sandra and I am really excited to be with you today. We've been talking recently about heroes for God. Have you ever imagined you were a superhero? What kind of power would you have? Most importantly, what would your superhero name be? Well, I've got a way you can give yourself a superhero name. On our website, you can download the superhero name list. It's a list of first names and a list of last names. You'll need to get a, yourself a die like this from any board game that you have at home. You roll the die once to get your first name and then a second time to get your last name. I did mine earlier. Do you want to know what my superhero name is? It's Lightning Tiger. <laughs> Why don't you try it? You can ask your grown up to email us at kids at falkirkvineyard.com to tell us your superhero name. Now, I don't know what you think about when you hear the word hero, but I think about people whose lives are action packed and go, go, go. But we're going to learn today that heroes for God know when to go and when to stop. Why is stopping so important for heroes of God? Well, by stopping to spend time with Jesus, we discover what's on his heart and what he's doing. So we can get in line with his heart and go and do what he's doing. I wanted to show you something that helps me to stop and listen to God. It's called a journal. A journal is a book that you write. And each day as you spend time with Jesus, you can talk to him and tell him about the stuff in your life. But you'll also stop talking and spend time being quiet. You'll be listening. Then you can write down any thoughts that come to your mind that might be from the Holy Spirit. And you'll be learning how to hear his voice. Remember, the Holy Spirit tells you things that help you understand God's heart and who he is. He encourages you to grow closer to Jesus and he'll never tell you anything that contradicts the Bible. I love to write in my journal. Maybe you can ask your grown up to help you get a journal so that you can spend time with Jesus too. Now I'm going to hand it over to Kenny who's gonna tell us today's story. Bye. Hi everyone. Isn't it good to be heroes? Did you know that we're heroes when we're on God's side? The Bible says in Psalm 60 verse 12 that with God's help, we can fight like heroes. We're heroes because we're on God's side. Like our Bible verse says, we can fight like heroes with God's help. And that means that when we're careful to follow God, we can do heroic things. Now, today we're going to learn another way that we can be a hero for God, but it might be a little bit different to other ways we spoke about or what you might think being a hero is like, because today we're going to learn that being a hero for God means knowing when to go and when to stop. And I guess part of it is about figuring out in our normal lives, when there are so many good things going on, it's about figuring out what's the most important thing. And so today's story is about two sisters. One chose to go and do good things, and one chose to stop and do the most important thing. So here's a story. While Jesus and his followers were traveling, they stopped in a town where a woman named Martha let them stay at her house. Here's Martha. And Martha had a sister named Mary. Mary was sitting at Jesus' feet and listening to him. But Martha became angry because she had so much work to do. And so Martha went in and she said, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me alone to do all the work? Tell her to help me. But the Lord answered her and said, Martha, Martha, 
you are getting worried and upset about too many things. Only one thing is important. Mary has chosen the right thing and it will never be taken away from her. Now, let's look a little bit closer at the story. Martha welcomed Jesus and his followers into her home. She was happy to see them. Perhaps she intended that she and Mary would make them feel comfortable and would feed them well as a way of showing Jesus that he was important to them. But at some point, Martha's attitude changed. She'd been go, go, going on her to-do list and then she became resentful about the many chores that she thought that she still had to do. And she was angry when Mary chose to stop and join what Jesus was doing instead of continuing with the chores. So angry that she marched into the room where Jesus was teaching and started to tell him off. Now, let's imagine what it might have been like to be Mary. Even though you're in the kitchen helping Martha prepare the evening meal, you can hear Jesus' voice coming through the window as he talks to his disciples inside. Oh, how you long to join them and be in the room with Jesus. But your sister has a long list of chores that she expects you to help with. What can you do? You're wrestling with your thoughts when, wait, did Jesus just turn and look at you? Did he just nod at you? Surely that nod is an invitation for you to come over and be with him. Now, let's think about Martha again. Can you imagine Martha's disbelief when she turns around and finds that Mary is gone? She searches for her and finds her sitting at Jesus' feet among the disciples, listening to Jesus. She probably went mad. Mary! How do you think Martha would have felt? See, Jesus said that Mary made the best choice. Why did Jesus say that Mary made the best choice? Well, he gives us a clue in Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 and 39, when he said, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. And Jesus called these verses the greatest commandments, because everything else that God wants us to do follows naturally if we do these things first. I think that Jesus was saying that we need to love God most so that we can love people best. Could this be what he meant when he said that one thing is important? See, Mary chose to stop the busy work she was doing and take time to be with Jesus, joining in with what he was doing. And this allowed her to be filled up with what she needed so she could serve other people with love. No wonder Jesus said that she'd chosen best. And maybe Martha's attitude was negative because she hadn't spent enough time with Jesus. Maybe if she'd lined up her actions with Jesus' actions, her heart would have lined up with his heart. Then she would have been able to do all her chores with a loving heart. We can also think of it like this. It's like Martha and Mary were in a race that could only be won by stopping. Martha was being like Dash from The Incredibles. Have you seen that movie? She was all, go, 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 go. And she didn't want to stop. But Mary knew what was best. So she stopped and she won. It took courage for Mary to stop because it made Martha angry. But Jesus was happy that she did. And he wouldn't let it be taken from her. Now, like Martha, we have busy, busy, busy lives too. We have school Homework, sports, spelling tests, chores. Maybe you take some kind of lessons like dance lessons or music lessons. There's birthday parties. There's clubs. There's dentist or doctor's appointments or video games, TVs, and also church. Now, certainly these are good things. But on top of it all, Jesus is inviting each of us to spend time with him so that we can line up our actions with his actions and our hearts with his heart. And here's the point. Heroes learn when to stop and when to go. And in our world, 
There are many things that cause us to become upset or stressed out and distracted. But Jesus says one thing is the most important and he's it. Do we believe him? Then what can we do to take time to stop and be with Jesus and catch a glimpse of what he's doing every day? It takes courage to stop, but it is worth it. Making time to be with Jesus will change your life. You'll become more heroic. So here's a challenge for you. This week, I want you to decide that you'll spend at least five to ten minutes every day with Jesus. How can you do that? Well, here's an idea. You can try reading a few verses from your Bible and asking, Holy Spirit, what do you want to show me today? And then listen for his answer. And then write the answer he gives you with the date in a notebook or in a journal so you can remember. Try to do this for the whole week. It can help you be a better friend, a better son or daughter, a better brother and sister. It can help you to make wiser, more heroic choices. And it can help you to feel less worried and stressed. So instead of just going and going and going and doing good, stop first and do what's most important. Lord, would you help us to understand that being with you is the most important thing? There's lots going on in our lives, lots that we have to do, but help us to always remember that spending time with you will fill us up with everything that we need to love other people and to be heroes for you in our everyday lives. And I pray this in your name. Amen. Okay, guys, we're going to have ministry time now where we pray and ask the Holy Spirit to speak to us. So today we're going to be using our imagination. So I'd like you to find a space on the floor and sit down. All right, is everyone sitting down? Are you comfy? Good. Okay. Now let's close our eyes and be quiet. All right. Now imagine that you are sitting at Jesus' feet just like Mary. Are you picturing it? Think about how good it is just to be in his presence. Thank you, Jesus, that you love us so much, that you want us to sit by your feet and learn from you and hear your words of love, hear your wisdom. Thank you, Jesus, for the way that you care for us. When we love you back. We want to sit at your feet and hear what you have to say. Amen. Good. Now find a piece of paper and write a word or draw a picture representing the thoughts that came to your mind as you simply sat and listened to the Holy Spirit. Or maybe it was a feeling you had just by being with him. If you'd like to share your pictures with us, you can get your grown up to email kids at falkirkvineyard.com. Awesome. Now, let's worship together. Peace, bring it all to peace. The storm surrounding me, let it break at your name. Jesus, Jesus, you 
silence fear Jesus, Jesus You make darkness tremble Jesus, Jesus Peace, bring it all to peace The storm surrounding me Let it break At your name Still, call the sea to still, the rage me to still, every way at your name, Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus, you silence fear. I'm ready. 
ready to go into the classroom, ready to go tell it on the street, ready to go and share with my family, ready to go into the darkest corners of the world. I will shine your light so all will see your worth. I want to go where you lead me, let the world know what you have done. Got my jetpack on and I'm ready to go. Thank you kids for hanging out with us today. We hope you had a great week and you learned to listen to God by trying out our journal idea. God bless you and we'll see you next week. Bye!